The bear market in junior resource stocks is just over three years old, and according to our next guest, the market is starting to show signs of improvement. Joining us from New York is Mickey Fult, geologist and editor at mercenarygeologist.com. Uh, Mickey, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Always my pleasure, Francis. There are some encouraging signs, and we'll get into those. But you have a, a really interesting graphic for us that we're going to show uh, to the viewers. It combines the TSX Venture uh, with the old uh, Vancouver Stock Exchange. They're essentially the, the same in terms of the index, not the same in terms of components because they change. But you're comparing 1998 uh, thereabouts with today, looking at kind of the performance what does this tell you about the direction of the venture exchange going forward? Well, the last bi uh, big bull market we had, of course, was post Briex, and, uh, and that really came in in the middle of 1997. But I would like to point out from early 1998 till uh, early 2000, the venture exchange had a four month or the Vancouver Stock Exchange had a four month decline and then it was range bound and relatively flat for a period of about 17 months. And that looks very similar to the pattern we see from the beginning of 2013 to now. We had the, the big drop off and then it's been relatively range bound and flat. And that would suggest that we have a ways to go before the uh, bear market is over, but things are getting a little bit better. And in fact, you say it's another six to seven months before we uh, are on a sustained uh, uh, trajectory higher. We also have another graph that looks at the um, performance over the last three years in terms of this uh, index of venture and the price of gold. So gold's not been a great place to be, but these these venture stocks disproportionately got beaten up. If you just look at the gold price, why is mm -hmm. that? Is it, I mean, they're not all gold stocks, but certainly uh, have been hurt. The venture hurt more than the underlying commodities. That's true. Uh, we all often use the gold price as a barometer for how the venture works. Uh, but in this case, we had the gold miners failing and we had the exploration companies, which for the most part did not perform during the last uh, boom period that ended in 2011. So there's been this divergence this, this time between the gold price and the venture exchange. Venture exchange doing much worse than gold. And you, um, on the fundamental side, you have a listing of four or five different fundamentals. I do like the fact that the PDAC curse that has overhung the bear market uh, has not appeared so far in 2014. We're going to show our viewers again the listing of these fundamentals. But uh, one of the ones that stands out to me is that you've uh, sort of the good companies are, are doing well or performing a little bit better. Uh, what does that suggest to you? Well, that suggests simply that uh, people are moving to the quality projects. So a lot of the speculation because of the underperformance has gone out of the market. And what we're seeing is a more savvy group of speculators who have been through this before and they're very much gravitating toward the better companies. And Francis, there are still many good companies uh, in the venture exchange that will be successful ultimately. And, and so we see investors moving to those. You also say, though, that uh, although many stocks are higher, most are still in the toilet waiting to get flushed. Does that mean, you know, essentially uh, by either going bankrupt, changing into another, or putting another hat, you know, through a, a backdoor listing or something like that? W what kind of companies are waiting to get flushed? Well, the majority of companies uh, which uh, did not have viable projects, they've diluted themselves beyond relevancy with ec low priced equity financings. Uh, generally, there are promoters who have had a success, uh, a, a, a history of 
what I would call mining the stock market. So I expect those to get flushed. Uh, they are not being flushed as quickly as we would hope because uh, the venture exchanges made it easier to finance. But eventually that has to happen. And at that point, we would end up with a meaner, cleaner, and leaner junior resource sector. And that would be very welcome, in my opinion. Your uh, report says six to seven months or so. That uh, kind of sits uh, uh, with the seasonal pattern, those are here, we're going to show again a list of things that just aren't quite lined up yet. One is seasonality. The other is liquidity, which uh, is, remains very, very low. In fact, half of what it has been in the past. Is that when liquidity is as low as it is, does that suggest? It certainly suggests nobody's playing. But is that the time you should be picking away at these good names, though? Well, I think so. And, you know, I very much adopt a contrarian philosophy in this market and go to sectors uh, within the resource sector, but individual spaces that are beaten up and no one wants them or no one knows about them. So, so we've been very successful over the last few months in picking some stocks that have done quite well. Including, I, I gather, Brazil Resources. Uh, it had a big gain and then fell back. Was the big gain just kind of, you know, picking the bottom and why the pullback? Well, it, it got beaten up quite uh, robustly in tax loss selling and they had an acquisition and, uh, and so they did a financing in mid-December, about 55 cents completed at the end of the year. And then they announced a significant increase in resources from a total of about a million and a half ounces of gold in Brazil to to 3.9 million ounces of gold, and it went ran up on that. Uh, much like the exchange, it started to settle down. It's trading uh, in the 93 cent, 90 cent range right now. But I find this encouraging because the free trading stock at 55 cents came out on May 1, and we don't see a bunch of selling. I should also point out it's not very well known. They have a significant uranium prospect in the far western Athabasca called the Rea Project, and is surrounded by, or it surrounds an Arriva deposit called uh, uh, Mabel River. And so we don't hear much about Mar Mabel River because it's Arriva, uh, a, a private company. But I would suggest this is a significant prospect they have. Mickey, always good to hear your thoughts. There's a lot of history in your reports, so we didn't even get to the uh, BC bud. But uh, we'll have uh, you on next time <laughs> to discuss that. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Francis. Mickey Fulp is a geologist and editor at mercenarygeologist.com, and he was in New York.